Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to another advanced listening practice lesson. Well, I am back from my vacation in America. I had gone out there to enjoy a nice trip, actually, just to see family and some friends, and it was my mother's 70th birthday, so I enjoyed a nice trip up there. And in today's lesson, I wanted to talk about that. So let's get started with the lesson. So I had a uh, really great time. I went to San Francisco and then I was in Bend, Oregon. That's where my mother lives. So it was a really nice place on the uh, eastern side of the Cascade Mountains. So in Oregon, or even in really California, but Oregon specifically, uh, you've got the water that comes off of the ocean, and then you've got the mountains that are not that far from the coast, and so a lot of the rain gets stopped up by the mountains. So my mom lives on the eastern side of those, and that's called the High Desert, that area over there. And there are lots of, uh, well, maybe just not so much rain, but they get lots of, lots of sun, and uh, it's mostly dry and hot over there. So anyway, way it's called the high desert. But uh, just one of the things I want to talk about in this video was specifically something that my mom reminded me of that I had completely forgotten about because you know when people get together they uh, they get to reminiscing so they start reminiscing to reminisce means to think about things or to talk about things uh, from the past so maybe you're feeling nostalgic to be nostalgic just means you're thinking about things from the past and remembering ah like I remember I had some great time at a family vacation or when I was in high school or something like that but anyway this was a story that my mom was telling me about college and I had completely forgotten about it. So back when I was in uh, maybe uh, like a sophomore in high school, so typically American high school, you got four years, you got freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior, and senior is the highest level. So when I was a sophomore, even by that point, I was still a pretty bad reader and writer because I just hated reading. I hadn't really found much that I enjoyed. And it wasn't until my junior year of high school that I actually enjoyed learning more about philosophy and things like that. But I got interested in that actually through some comic books or kind of comic books. These are more picture books, uh, like comics, I suppose you could call them. They were based on Chinese philosophy, so a couple of things like Zen, uh, actually, well, that's Japanese, but it's coming from uh, like traditional Chinese, let's see, what was it, maybe uh, Taoism, so there was a book about Taoism, and a couple of other books that were about like kind of Eastern or maybe like Asian history, that kind of thing as well. So I was really excited to learn about those things, and that's what got me interested in reading. But by the time I got into college, I still had really bad grades, so even though I was starting to read more. I kind of, as we say, I got to the party late. So I was getting into college and really college kicked my ass the first couple of years I was there. So I did really bad. Uh, and I was talking to my mom about being on academic probation, which means that I was getting really bad grades in college. So my freshman year. So I had taken a couple of uh, AP classes. This is advanced placement in high school, but didn't really do very well in those classes either. So anyway, uh, it was kind of a nice experience to get into those things and start learning more for college. But still, when I got to college, I didn't end up uh, doing very well. So because I had been interested in these philosophy things, so like Taoism and Zen Buddhism and other things like that, uh, and various other you know traditions coming from China, I was really interested in studying more about philosophy in school. But most of the stuff that was offered at my school was all Western philosophy. So things like um, American pragmatism, I don't even want to go into lots of different things, but basically uh, I learned a lot about pragmatism, which is like being pragmatic. And instead of talking about the platonic idea of like, what is this really? So we can look at my hand and say it's a hand, but like, what is it really? That idea of what is it really, instead of just what is it in an everyday sense, is a big thing in philosophy. So instead of talking about the uh, the complete and perfect form of something, like if I'm talking about Plato, I can be talking about uh, John Dewey. So this is a man who was just a, an American pragmatist, and he talked about what is this really? It doesn't really matter what you know what the actual form of this thing is. Like it doesn't matter like if if it's real or not real or whatever, the point is what can we do with it? And so that really got me thinking and I really enjoyed learning about that in school. But anyway, even though I had an interest, I was still a really awful writer and not really thinking very well about how I could improve. And so uh, this was the part of the story that my mom reminded me about when I was at her birthday party. And she was telling me how I actually asked the professor if I could do work over the summer. So I was I was talking to him and like now the, the memories started to come back to me. But I thought it was really funny that I was asking him uh, like between my I think my sophomore and junior year of, uh, of college, I was actually 
actually writing papers over the summer and just asking like, hey, I'll write the paper and send it to you. Can you email it or can you um, uh, can you like check it for me? I actually don't remember if he emailed it to me or not. I think we actually mailed like physical papers back and forth to each other. So I would write something and then he would check it and then I would look at the, the writing and then I would write it again and send it back to him. And I don't really know what encouraged me or what inspired me to do that. But I think maybe when I got to college, I felt kind of stupid. <laughs> so I felt bad that, you know, even even in high school, I could I could kind of coast along. To coast on something, if you think about this, this is like when you're driving a car and you have your foot down on the accelerator to actually make the uh, make the car go. So if you pick your foot up, the car is still coasting for a little bit, and it will continue to coast until it stops. And so when you hear uh, people talking about coasting when they're in a particular school environment, something like that, it just means that they're kind of not really making much of an effort. They're just doing what's the easy thing to do, and they're, they're still getting by, but they're not doing a really good job. So I've been coasting in high school because I didn't really need to work so hard, but when I had to uh, work harder in college, that was, again, what really kicked my ass, what really got me to start thinking, well, maybe I'm not so smart and I can, I can, well, I guess I have to really start working harder and actually do a lot of work if I really want to graduate. So I just thought that was a really interesting story that my mom told me that I had completely forgotten about. And it just reminded me like the, the things that you see about people like, wow, like that guy has become a good writer or this guy or this woman or whatever. When you look at people that have a particular skill, it's not because they just develop that overnight. It was something that really takes a lot of time. And so today, what I'd like to leave you with is a phrase uh, that's a very common one in conversational English, and this is to go the extra mile. To go the extra mile. If you think about walking, you're on a hike or something like that, you can walk from here to here, but if you want to get even more exercise and train your body a little bit more, give yourself a little bit of extra challenge, you go the extra mile. So you move a little bit further, make a little bit extra effort, and all those little bit of extra efforts, all of these together, combine to make up a much more powerful thing, something much more important, and that's really what defines the people that end up succeeding at whatever they do. So you hear stories about basketball players like Larry Bird. So he would come into practice. He would be the first one there. He would be the last one to leave. He's going the extra mile. And you can talk a lot about the natural talent that people have. Maybe somebody is uh, like a really great basketball player and you can see that. But what's more likely is that because they've taken that extra time to practice, they're actually seeing a lot more improvement. So what I'd like to encourage you to do today is to go the extra mile with how you practice. And it doesn't matter whether it's uh, how you speak or how you learn or the way you learn, whatever that thing happens to be, but actually take just a little bit of extra time uh, in the same way that maybe you do 10 push-ups in one day, maybe you try doing 11 or 12 or something like that. Just a little bit extra to try to go the extra mile to train yourself to do a little bit more than is necessary. Because that way, when you get into the conversation with people, you know, you're actually more kind of well prepared than you would be normally if you were just in a conversation and maybe you hadn't really practiced so much. So whatever your your focus is in life, you should be always trying to make the extra mile and hopefully you have a lot of passion for what you do so you can do that. But the important thing here is again, think about what's like some little bit of extra thing that you can do and that's what's going to help you get more fluent because the people that are fluent there's nothing special or magical like even me being able to speak Japanese there's nothing amazing about that it's just more did I learn in the right way did I take the time and did I actually go the extra mile to continue practicing so I can do more than just understand people when they talk to me I can actually you know have like a great conversation. So actually today I was out and I was filming. Uh, I don't know. We'll see if it becomes a vlog episode or not, but I figured I would tell you about it. So I went out today and I was doing uh, just in my local neighborhood. I was out getting a haircut and I thought, hey, why not show a little bit of my neighborhood and what things are like? And going in there, it's me and the owner of this shop and then two friends of mine. So we're actually all friends, but, uh, you know, they're all quick and especially like men, younger men in particular speaking Japanese are quite difficult because they're using uh, really, really quick language and speaking quite quickly and not obviously expressing themselves in the same way you would see in a textbook. So if I'm not prepared for that, then I can't 
really have fun in going back back and forth with these people. Uh, and again, a lot of that comes from just taking the extra time to do the little bit of work that's maybe not so fun, but you're going the extra mile and that's what's helping you improve. Anyway, I will leave you with that today. I don't want to give you too much. It's nice to be back from my vacation. I'm slowly easing my way into working a little bit more, but we have a lot of interesting things coming up, a lot of things that we're really excited about, especially our ultimate guide to pronunciation, which we'll be releasing very soon, and a few of, uh, I guess, some other things as well that we're really excited about, but I'll save those for later topics. Anyway, have a fantastic day. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, and do become a subscriber of the EnglishAnyone.com YouTube channel if you aren't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. To continue learning, click on the link in this video to download Speak English Naturally, our free guide to speaking and sounding like a native English speaker. The guide reveals the three most important kinds of conversational English you must learn if you want to sound native, and will help you experience instant improvement in your fluency and speaking confidence. To download your free guide on a mobile device, click on the link in the upper right of this video. To download your free guide from a computer, click on the link in the lower right of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the guide.